Good morning, Jeremy. We heard you describe Boris Johnson as dead man walking. That's correct. Um, I think I'm, politically, of course, uh, not in any other sense. But I, I think that um, we've reached the end of the road with Mr. Johnson so far as his political career is concerned. Were you in the Commons yesterday? I heard every word that was said. Did, what did you find unconvincing about it? The apology was OK and necessary, and I thought that was a good start. Unfortunately, Mr. Johnson then went on to say that um, he had spent 25 minutes at what he described as a works event, which patently was a party. There was food, there was drink, it was a party. Wait, so when, and, you, when you have the bring your own bottle thing, it's not work anymore, is that right? Well, I, I don't, I'm not aware that there is a custom and practice of a, a bring and bottle work events at Downing Street. Um, but the problem is, on the, uh, Mr. Johnson said from the dispatch box that he was not aware of any parties in Downing Street. Well, we now know that he attended one. And that means that he misled the House from the dispatch box, and he clearly did that deliberately. And that is a very serious offence indeed. I see. So that, that was a previous <laughs> statement that he made about the parties that is, was clearly untrue. It's, it's in Hansard, it's in black and white. Well, you, you'd be faced with a bit of a difficulty now if, if you got rid of him. He got an 80-seat majority only two years ago, and you'd have to go, I guess, for Rishi Sunak, who's quite inexperienced. Um, I'm not going to play what is known as the bus game. The bus game is, if the Prime Minister went under a bus, who would you have? First of all, at the moment, there is no vacancy. If there were to be a vacancy, then I suspect a number of people, probably up to eight, would put their hats into the ring. And at that time, um, then most of us would decide who we wanted to get behind. But um, I'm not going to make that judgment now because that is, at the moment, hypothetical. Well, it, you, you say it's hypothetical. I mean, to playing the bus game, OK, there's no vacancy, but there's definitely a bus, isn't there? Because <laughs> it just hit him. Um, well, well you... there's, a, there's a bus, but we're not quite sure who's on board, if you like. Um, <laughs> there are a number of people. I mean, one of the things we've got in the Conservative Party is a huge amount of talent. We're very lucky with that. Yeah. Um, and, and there are any one of a number of people who I suspect would wish to be considered and they deserve fair consideration. Should the police investigate this, Sir Roger? That's a matter for the constabulary. I'm not clear whether or not a law has actually been broken. Downing Street technically is a private garden. Um, whether or not the Prime Minister was facilitating an illegal event is a moot point. That's something that um, and it's a long time since I held a police warrant and my law is not that good. I don't think that um, I don't think I'd want to exercise that judgment. That's a matter for the Met. The problem with that, of course, is that it would delay the inquiry that um, Sue Gray is conducting. Uh, and that would not be helpful. Thank you very much, Dee. Sir Roger Gale. So senior backbencher MP for Thanet. And uh, that's pretty serious when uh, you get people like Roger Gale turning against you.